Welcome to Chris Lemon's session. Chris is VP of Product and Innovation at Liquid Web. He's a blogger at chrislemon.com and also leaders.blog. He's a writer of various ebooks and a public speaker. He loves telling stories to help people leverage their technology for their personal use and business. A lead strategist, Chris Lemon. She was struggling with her website. It was a WooCommerce site. She called me on Clarity.fm, and she was like, I'm having a problem. Uh, the website is, is slow, and it's not converting. So I have a conversion problem, and I'm having trouble. I said, well, what are you selling? She said, sandpaper. <laughs> I'm not sure conversion is the problem. <laughs> She said, no, it's sandpaper, but it's sandpaper of all different kinds. And I mean, we have international customers from across the globe that all uh, buy different kinds of sandpaper for different kinds of projects that they do. And we make good money on it, but we're, we're having a big problem. And I said, so WooCommerce site? She said, yeah. I said, okay. Uh, can you give me the URL? So she gives me the URL. Now, if you don't know Clarity, Clarity.fm is a service where people call me and they pay by the minute to get advice. Right? And I charge a decent amount of dollars per minute, so everything about this has to be fast. So she gives me the URL, I type the URL into my browser, I have really good internet access. You know, you go to that like uh, speed test or something and you run it and you're like, ooh, look, the dial's going way far, so I know that it's not going to be my problem if something's slow. And normally on a call like this, Silence just feels like it takes even longer. So I say, can you give me the URL? She says, sure. I put it into the browser, I hit enter, and we begin to wait. <laughs> and we wait. And we wait. Do you know how many seconds it took to load that homepage? Okay. It was 27 seconds. 27 seconds. And on a clarity call where you pay by the minute, it felt like hours. And she's like, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you looking at the site? What are you doing? And I'm like, just hold on a second. Still loading. Still loading. Hold on a second. I said, I, I don't know all of your conversion problems. <laughs> but I know at least one. Right? When you found that you saw the, oh, I like this kind of, you know, sandpaper for this kind of product, right? And you clicked the category that was on the homepage, like this is the kind of sandpaper I want. You clicked, you started waiting all over again. And waiting, and waiting, and waiting. You finally get the page to load, and I'm like, okay, here it is. All right, I'm going to add it to my cart. You click a button, and you start waiting, <laughs> and waiting. Here's what you should know if you don't know this already. A two-second delay, a two-second delay in a WooCommerce site going from one page to another, right? An internal movement from one page to another in a WooCommerce store, two-second delay can cause a 51% decrease in session length, okay? Now, this is not going to be rocket science, but let me be clear. When does conversion happen in the course of a session? At the first half or at the second half? Right? It's the second half. For those of you that were like wondering, it's the second half. And so if you cut session length in half, you are also often cutting conversion completely out of mix. Right? If you have a two second delay going from page to page and you cut session length in half, you are likely cutting conversion out of the mix completely. People are just not, well, let me, let's just do a quick quiz here, right? You go to a website that is not Amazon.com, <laughs> okay? You're looking at something that you think, hey, this is pretty cool, and then you go to click to get more details, and you wait three <coughs> seconds. And then you click to go back, or to add it to your cart, and you wait a few more seconds. How many of you keep plugging along, and how many of you go find it on another website? How many of you keep plugging along? Right, there's three of you, you're so good. <laughs> right. The rest of us are like, no thanks, I'll just go somewhere else, right? Here's another thing to note, and the last slide that I just showed you, and the last data I showed you on the 51% decrease session length, that was from a 2017 study. This 
was also from a 2017 study, right? That the optimal time to wait to get to a site and have it load up is mere seconds. Mere seconds, right? And you, and in fact, that special number, 2.7, that's a special number because Google has decided that they're going to determine how friendly you are by that number. If your site takes longer than 2.7 seconds to load, especially if it's a store, right? They're going to decide that you don't really want customers. 2.7 is the magic number. If you are above 2.7, Google's just like, no, we'll send traffic somewhere else because you're just anti-customers. Now, here's the crazy thing. I run a team at Liquid Web where we have just launched a managed WooCommerce product. That is not why I'm talking here today, but I will tell you that in order for us to do our product work, we did some research. So here's what we did. We went to WooCommerce.com slash showcase. You can all do this too, right? If you go to showcase, you have a whole bunch of WooCommerce stores. People have submitted and said, hey, check it out, I'm using WooCommerce. There are 562 sites. If you click hitting next and you pull down all the URLs, 562 sites. Of the 562 sites, 60 no longer use WooCommerce, right? They've gone on to do something else, whatever. That's not a big deal in the big scheme of things. 502 sites. Of the 502 sites, 476 of them take longer than four seconds to load. Now you're going to go, oh, this is WooCommerce's fault. Like if everybody is slow, it's WooCommerce's fault. It's not. It's not WooCommerce's fault, right? There's a whole bunch of things that go into it. And we have a target. We know what we want for those stores, for every one of those stores and all of your stores, right? Get it down under 2.7. A third 2017 study, right, said 53% of the traffic to stores specifically was coming on mobile devices. Now, here's the crazy thing about mobile devices. You all have them, right? Everybody here have a mobile device? You likely have three things with you at any point when you leave the house. Your keys, your wallet, and your mobile device, right? So what happens when you're on a mobile device and you're looking at a store, right? You're like, oh, I'm checking out this thing, I wanna buy this thing, whatever. And then Facebook pops up or uh, Instagram pops up or you get a notification, a text message from someone, and you get distracted. If the majority of your traffic is coming to you on a mobile phone and your site is slow and they get distracted, you've lost the conversion there too. Does that make sense? So what I'm telling you, not shocking, right? It's not a big deal, it's not uh, something you won't understand, is that Speed matters, right? 100 millisecond delay can hurt conversion times by 7%. Speed matters. So what happens is you hear all the time, right? How many of you are developers? Okay, how many of you are not developers? Awesome. Let me talk to the non-developers. When you are not a developer and you talk to a developer, they're like, well, it can be fast, it can be cheap, or it can be good. Pick two. Right? And now we say, <clears throat> no, I want to pick all three. I want it fast, I want it cheap, and I want it good. So what we're going to do with our time today is we're going to look at stuff you can do that's fast, stuff that you can do that's cheap, and then some of the stuff that's really good that may cost you a little bit or may take some time. Does that make sense? Yes. Everyone, we're good for this? Yeah, this is the, the verbal part where you're like, yeah! Oh, that's great, all right. So, we're going to get started right away. By the way, every one of these slides is going to have one and only one point. You are likely going to want to remember this point. Some of you are thinking, I'm going to have to write every one of these points down. If you go to slideshare.net, slideshare.net slash C as in Chris, F as in Frank, L E, M as in Mary, A, C F Lemma, slideshare.net slash C F Lemma, this is the most recent presentation. It's all there. So, you have to do that. Right? You don't have to write all the notes down. The other thing you can do is take your mobile phone, if you have it, point it up to the screen, take a picture, and if you want, you can go on Twitter, right, and tweet it out to the world, and make sure that you put at Chris Lemma so that everyone knows that I was the brilliant creator of this most beautiful slide, right? All right, first thing you can do, super fast, get rid of the plugins you're not using, and you're like, duh, that's stupid, except, do you know that the average WooCommerce site that we've seen at Liquid Web, the average WooCommerce site has over 30 plugins on their site, at least five of which are constantly deactive. And you're like, uh, what is this? 
Now we've seen some other sites that have like 47 plugins and 12 deactive. And you're like, dear God, what are you doing? And they're like, I don't know, I didn't build it. Someone else built it for me, I gave them, I said, I want, a whole, I want all of Amazon, and I want it by Saturday, and I have $300, and this is what I got. <laughs> and you go, yeah, okay, that lines up, I get that. So here's the thing, right? If you bought a WooCommerce store, or you built a WooCommerce store, right? You may have used certain plugins to import data. You may have used certain uh, plugins to monitor what's going on. You may have done all sorts of things that at this point you no longer need. Get rid of them. Right? Get rid of them. The first pass, super fast. Just go in and go, okay, we haven't used that, we haven't used that, we haven't used that. You can ask questions like, is anyone using this? Why is this here? Right? I'm not joking. I have a WooCommerce customer who had three redirection plugins. Because if one is good, three is probably better, right? Three. You're like, this is insane. Right? And it was because he had different people work on the site over different periods of time. And so each one has said, well, this is my favorite redirection plugin. And pulled it in and done some stuff down there. So get rid of the ones you're no longer using. That's, that's super fast, right? Also, get rid of the ones that could just be a snippet, right? Some, it's not you. Okay, let's be clear. This is not any of you. But there are some people out there who have activated a plugin that is like, it does 45 things, and they're using it to do one thing. Like, turn off the shop buttons. I just want a catalog of my website. And you're like, yeah, okay. So I downloaded this super premium plugin that it controls all your WooCommerce styles, and it does all these things. And then you're like, well, what are you using it for? Well, I just wanted to turn off this button. And you're like... Dear God, we could have done that in one line of code. Right? You don't need the kitchen sink plugin to do that. I'm like, well, I didn't know, so I just pulled it down. And then what's crazy is people will pull five plugins like that to do five different things, right? And you're like, whoa, we're going crazy here, right? Later in this presentation, I'll show you a place where you can get a whole bunch of snippets so that you can just load it up into a plugin called Code Snippets, right? And so you can just pull these things in and go, oh, good, there it is. I don't have to use plugins to do that. Okay, I, I know that at every WordCamp that you've been to in the last five years, we have told you, don't do this. Don't go get the multi-featured, super bloated theme for your website. Do you know how much impact we have had as public speakers who have been speaking at WordCamps two, three hundred across the country for five years in a row, you're talking about 1,500 or more events, and in each of those events, two to three tracks, and in each of those tracks, five to eight people speaking, you're talking about tons of people who have said, stop picking your theme because it comes with 42 form plugins and 36 slider plugins, and because the demo looks beautiful, but it's like 900 megabytes large. We've said it over and over. Do you know how much impact we have had? Zero. That's round numbers. Zero. <laughs> right? Zero. Because this is what we do, right? We go onto Theme Forest or we go somewhere else, someplace, and we look and we go, well, does it look beautiful? That's cool. Then what does it come with? Because I don't have to buy extra stuff. Ooh, look, it comes with everything. Great. I'll use that one. We had a client the other day who wanted to bring their site over to our stuff and it's a WooCommerce short. Could you take a look at it? We looked at it. 17 second page load. 17 second page load. We did one thing. We pulled off the theme and loaded up another one. A lightweight theme, which we'll talk about in a second. We just swapped the theme, right? Now granted, it did change the layout, the look a little bit. It wasn't dramatic, right? Three second load. Your super cool theme, right? You have to decide that you want that multifaceted, multi-featured, come with everything, every plugin possible. You have to want it 14 seconds so badly that you're like, yes, I understand what I'm doing and I still want, right? And that means conversions are walking out the door, right? So you have to be really careful about what theme you're using. Does that make sense? Yeah? I know you all agree, but you know what's gonna happen tomorrow? You're gonna go look at the theme and you're still gonna do the same thing, right? Because I already know, I've been lulled into this. You're saying yes, it's not yes. Compress all your images, right? Compress all your images. It's not hard to do. There are all, I mean, there's tons of different ways you can do this. Eight or nine different plugins. There are things you can run on the desktop if you care about. Just take all your images and run them through the process. You know why? Because your photographer who took the beautiful photos 
of those products, that photographer used a high-end digital camera. That high-end digital camera had a 24 megapixel or 42 megapixel perspective on that image, and they sent it to you because that, that photographer likely has been doing photography for years. And because that photographer's been doing it for years, they remember the pre-digital age where they would send it to places that would print images. So you needed 300, 400 DPI. So they're sending you a five megabyte image for something you're gonna put as a 300 pixel box on your screen. You don't need an image that's more than 8, 10, 100 KB, and they're sending you five megabytes. And you know what you do? You're like, cool, they shared me Dropbox. Let me grab all those images and just move them to my WooCommerce store. And everything takes forever. Average website, not even WooCommerce, like average website taking one, two seconds to load, more often than not, it's because of the images. Right? So compress them. You don't need them any larger than what you're going to actually display on your site. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. Now, this one is fast but controversial. Okay? Here's the thing. Your store may be unique, and this may not apply. If you're the kind of store that people come to, they are regularly shoppers at your store. They come to it all the time. And they regularly log in. They, they love getting recommendations for themselves personally. And you are getting high conversions. This probably does not apply at all. But the majority of stores don't function that way. The majority of stores, what happens is you put all your stuff out to display. And then customers just come and they take just a quick dive to look, right? Because they were doing a Google search. And they were like, uh, I need to get a, a leather bag. And so they get a whole bunch of links for the stores that sell leather bags. They right click, open up tab, open up tab, open up tab. They got a whole bunch of tabs open. And they're going to come to your site and they're just going to peek around, da, 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 look around and get out. That's the majority of your people. So you can go look at Google Analytics and be like, how many people visited my store this month or this week? And you're like, oh, we have 2,000 people visit. Then you go back and look at your, well, how many transactions we have? Six. Okay, if you have 2,000 people visiting your store and six are buying, doesn't it make more sense to optimize for the 1,994 of them? Of course it does. Because if you're one of those tabs that they get, they spin up the tab that opens and the page is still loading, they just go to the next tab. Oh, boop, that showed up. I'll just spend my time there. They never got to your site because it was still circling around, still loading, because your site took so long to load. So what do you do? Get rid of the customized, personalized data that's sitting in the header, sitting in the footer. You might even have a sidebar that says, look, here's your shopping cart. And the reason you put your shopping cart there was because if someone added something to a cart, they could get that immediate feedback that said, here's the item in your cart right there on your site. But so few people are doing that, but now you've created a page that can't be cached in any way, shape, or form. You've done that to yourself, right? So get rid of some of the personalized stuff. Right now, again, your store may be unique enough that you're like, no, I can't do that. Great, well, lots of other tips for you. All right, here's one, super easy. If your website is not running PHP 7, right, just say yes, right? And if you don't know if it's running PHP 7, contact your host and say, Are, is my site running PHP 7? And they're like, oh, no, it's not right now. Great, is there something I can do to make it happen? Yeah, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just make that happen. Great, thank you very much. Hey, can you look at my database? Is it running in ODB? Right? Is that, is that the storage engine for my database? They're like, uh, let me look. Uh, no, it's not. Well, is that something you can do easily? Yeah, okay, great. Boom. These are not things you have to spend a lot of time on. You just have to know to ask. Right? But you will dramatically speed up your store if you change how the infrastructure is working. Okay? So those are all the fast ones. Does that make sense? Yeah? We good? Have you got enough that you're like, this session's good enough that we can leave now and we don't have to worry about the rest of them? <laughs> no, it's not gonna, I, I'm trying. Okay, let's see if this next one helps, okay? <laughs> we talked about this already. Change the theme to something lightweight. We tested 50 different themes for WooCommerce. 50 different themes, ran through a whole bunch of different tests. We have 25 different performance tests that navigate through things where you're logged in, things where you're logged off. Right? We're doing it where people are actually, hit, you know, we're having thing, you know, virtual users hit the site while other people are checking my account and other people are putting things in their cart. We ran through 25 different tests against 50 different themes. The fastest theme is a free theme 
called Astra. A-S-T-R-A. And you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> now they have a pro version that you pay a little more for that gives you some additional features, a little bit like more plugins to attach to the theme. But this lightweight theme, and it works great with a page builder. If you're someone who likes Beaver Builder or Elementor or one of those, it works with those, right? But you get a lightweight theme and suddenly you're like, this is amazing. We do, the we do a performance challenge where we invite you to migrate your store temporarily, just a copy of the site, over to our servers, and we'll put it on our managed WordPress, uh, managed WooCommerce offering, and we'll run a whole bunch of different optimizations on our platform, and then we'll show you what the speed was over there, what the speed is over here, and the difference. And then we do this one last extra thing where we get rid of your theme and put in Astra, and just go, look, we're not saying you have to do this, but this is how else it would help, right? And it's amazing, because you go, okay, it was a 10 second load, and then we did a bunch of optimizations, and it became like a five second load, or a four second load, and then we changed the theme, and it was like a one second load. And every time it comes back to, well, your theme was written by someone who cared about how it looked, not necessarily cared about how it performed. Now, there's nothing wrong with the look. I mean, honest to God, that's what we wanted themes to be. Themes are the things that make your site look the way they look. So the people who are working on making themes look the way they look, they're good people. But just because you're good at designing something that looks good doesn't mean you're good at making sure it performs well and performs well in the context of e-commerce. So what you want to do is look for a theme that's lightweight and performs well. Now, Storefront is another one that, that the guys at WooCommerce have rolled out, the people there, and it's free too, right? And again, you can pay to get trial themes, you can pay to get extra add-ons, right? Um, but there are several themes that are super lightweight. Evaluate that for yourself. Does that make sense? All right. This one, right, is cheap. It's not free, but it's cheap. You can hire. You can go to codable.io and you can hire someone, right? You can call your host. You may have to pay a little surcharge depending on who the host is, but you can ask someone to look at your database. And we're looking for orphans. Now, orphans are not, you know, it's not, these are not people. <laughs> these are things that were left in your database when you deactivated a plugin, stopped using a theme, changed how you were doing something, and they just sat there. You have tables that are sitting there. You may have external calls or transits. I mean, there's all sorts of things you could have sitting there that you no longer need. And you go, yeah, but I'm not using it, so what does it matter? Your database as a whole, right, is storing things in a predefined set of tables, right? The database tables are the places where we store things. If you have extra entries in that table that you don't need, Every time we do a query to get the data from those tables that we do need, we have to go through all the other stuff you don't. Imagine, right, imagine if we're in this room trying to listen to this conversation and we said, oh, well there's gonna be like, you know, there's gonna be a big commerce and a Shopify and a Squarespace e-commerce guy. They're all gonna be up here. They're not gonna get a mic because only Chris gets the mic because this conversation is with commerce. But the rest of them can up, be up here and they're just gonna be talking. Just ignore them. And you're like, well, yeah, I can kind of ignore them, but it's annoying, and it's hard to hear all the time, and sometimes I miss a word. Well, that's what's happening in your database. You've loaded it up with other stuff that doesn't belong there, and it's hard to get at the rest of the stuff that you do care about. So hire someone to go in and clean it up, and they'll just go, okay. It's not a, it's not a big job, right? You just go in and you're like, okay, uh, I see that you have these tables here. No longer needed. I see you have these entries here. No longer needed. Clean it out. Does that make sense? All right. Now WooCommerce has a whole bunch of super cool features, and because those features are super awesome, they require scripts that have to be in your site to actually be able to do things, right? This is, I mean, this is fantastic. Everything about how WooCommerce was designed for this lets you be super flexible. That's their point, their ability to let you do what you want to do. But with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. And some of you, not you, you know people, other people, aren't very responsible, right? So what happens? You have your theme or your code or another plugin that is actually spinning up additional enqueued calls or JavaScript calls or 
prepping for short codes that will never materialize on a page because you have already determined you're not going to put a short code there. So why do you want those woo functions running on those pages? We love JavaScript, right? We love JavaScript. You learn it deeply. And JavaScript was this thing that you was like, oh, it's so cool because it's asynchronous, right? It's just going to go off and, and do its own call. You know what happens with JavaScript is that first you have to connect to whatever server has the JavaScript. Then you have to pull it down. Then your processor has to go figure out what's in it and what we have to do with it. And all of that takes time. And we're talking about speed and performance. And every second, every 100 milliseconds count. So if you have three, four, or 27 additional calls, and you're pulling files down, and then you're waiting for them to come all the way down, and then you're processing them, figuring out what you're compiling and what you're going to use, all for a page that has no short code in it, you just threw away an extra second and a half, two seconds for no good reason. So limit Woo functions on non-Woo pages. Now, there is a super cool plugin called the Query Monitor plugin. This is one of those that you're going to want to install, use, and then deinstall. Right? Deactivate and get off, because you don't want to leave plugins sitting around doing nothing. But this is super cool, because what it will do is it will actually show you the queries that are being run on your pages. And you're going, wait, what's a query? Everything about your store, everything about WooCommerce, everything about WordPress is fundamentally stored. If it's not in a plugin file, if it's not an image, it's stored in the database. And in order to get the data from the database back to the engine, to the PHP, the process that brings it out to you, all of it has to go back to a database. Unless it's cached, you're hitting a database. So think about it as the long distance call to your grandma. You have a long distance call, you have to make that call. Now, how much does it cost to make the call? Depends on where your grandma's at. And Career Monitor tells you, oh, my grandmother, right, for the longest time, was in South America, in Chile. We could only call her certain times of the day when the price was right, right? This thing tells you the price of every one of those calls. This thing tells you literally, here is exactly how many calls that plug is making, how many calls that plug is making, how many calls that plug is making, how many calls that page or that post or that plug-in it's telling you that so that you can look at it and go, wait a minute, I barely use that plugin. Why is it making a hundred queries? Right? And you can start asking yourself very special questions about, hmm, I loved my grandma, right? But I remember asking my mom, hey, how come we don't call her when we come after school like we call the other grandma that happened to be here in California? I say, we love her, we just don't love her that much. <laughs> she was not my mom's mom, she was my dad's mom. <laughs> All right. Dashboard, right? You log into a WooCommerce store, you get the dashboard. You go to uh, reports, you get admin screens. You go to products, you get admin lists, right? You get all that stuff in the admin side and you get all that stuff in the dashboard and every one of those screens is making calls to the database, more queries. And every time you make calls for those things, you're impacting the performance of your production store to customers. Does that make sense? Every call you make to the database for yourself is slowing down the performance of what your customers experience on the store. So you can have a tremendous impact on your store simply by what you're looking at. Now here's the crazy part. You can also have a tremendous impact on the performance of your store at things you're not looking at. How many of you spend a lot of time on the dashboard, even if you're not running a WooCommerce store, looking at everything that comes on your dashboard? How many of you are like, oh my god, I love this dashboard, and I spend a lot of time looking at all this stuff? Yeah, there's always one in the crowd. Um, the reality is, there's a whole bunch of queries that are running on that page, on the dashboard, that you don't ever look at. And there are columns, when you go to the product page, there are columns that they have to literally go to the database to go pull so that they can show you the price of the products or the orders or anything else that you're, you're pulling queries and you might not even care. So start turning those things off. Take those things off the dashboard. Turn off columns in the, in the admin pages that you don't specifically need and limit the amount of calls you're making that impact your customer site. Does that make sense? Awesome. And you're probably going, okay, but hold on a second. Uh, how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. 
Now we're here at that second. <laughs> GitHub.com, Luke cap slash code dash snippets dash WP dash speed dash up. If you go to that URL, Luke is a guy that works for us at Liquid Web, and he has a ridiculous quantity of code snippets that just do different things. And the beautiful thing is you're like, yeah, but I don't, I don't read code. No, but you can read the title of the snippet. <laughs> and the title of the snippet is stuff that's not imaginative. It says stuff like, turn off the woo orders widget in the dashboard. And you go, great, I'm not looking at the dashboard for orders. So yes, let me take that one and let me put it in my uh, code snippets plugin and activate it. And the code snippets plugin lets you say, activate this only on admin, or activate it on the whole site, or activate it just on the front end for customers. And you're like, ooh, that's an admin one, so let's just run it in admin. And you go, great, that code snippet will turn that off. And there's a whole bunch more in there. And you can go, ooh, that's good, let's try that. I'm not telling you which ones to run. Every choice of that is yours as you test out your store. But there's a whole bunch here to look at. Does that make sense? All right. Those are all the cheap ones. Let's talk about spending some money. Change your host. Change your host. You're like, wait a second. Don't you work at a host? Yep. And I would tell you the same thing if you work with us right now. If you're a customer of ours right now, I would still tell you. Regularly evaluate your host. Do you know why? Every single hosting company in the world, whether they own their own data center like we do or not, whether you're sitting as a, a host is sitting on someone else's data center, at the end of the day, there is always a server, right? Could be containers which sit on top of resource, whatever, but there is a computing resource. And it turns out nobody gives you those for free. Someone has to make a capital investment. So what happens? The people who made the most recent capital investment will have faster equipment than the people who are trying to milk another year out of the capital investment they made five years ago. So it doesn't matter which host you're talking about. Whether you're talking about GoDaddy or Liquid Web, SiteGround or Bluehost, it doesn't matter. At some point, they had to put an expense. And if they are not owning their own data center, they're paying someone else, that person has to pay for the expense. And then that, you know, that company is going to pass along that dynamic to them, right? So fundamentally, at some point, you're paying for outdated hardware. The fastest thing you do to speed up your website? Test it on someone else's hardware. Just, it's ridiculous. It's so simple, it's stupid, but, and it will cost you something, right? Because every migration costs you something, right? But test it. Take your stuff, put it somewhere else, run it through some tests, and decide if you want to move it there or not. But you should do this regularly, right? Every, I would say, probably every 18 months to 24 months, you should evaluate all the hosts all over again, right? For serious performance, right? And you go, oh, okay, this one's faster. Now this one's faster. You, you don't have to have tremendous loyalty to a host. You have to have tremendous loyalty to that performance of that store, because that's what drives conversions. Does that make sense? Okay. Now there are, as much as I say get rid of these plugins and don't use big plugins and bloated plugins and all that stuff, there are a couple plugins we found 